Hello and welcome back. It's Jennifer McGuire with another card making video. Now if you're like me and you make a lot of cards, sometimes you just want to do something completely different outside of the normal four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. So today I have a shaped card for you and actually this goes beyond just a shaped card. It actually has a see-through opening in the center. I wanted to do a floral wreath that was just the wreath and that's it. And it actually has a clear panel in the center with the stamped greeting. And you can still write a message on the inside of this too. So I'll show you how to put this whole thing together. Now I went around my house looking for something circular that would be just a little bit smaller than the 5x5 five five envelope that I have. I found this plastic uh, bowl in my kitchen and I decided to trace that and cut that for the outside of my wreath shape. Now I have two pieces of cardstock that I'm cutting together at the same time. This is going to save me a lot of time because I need two pieces that are cut the exact same to form a wreath. So this, these are just going to basically look like two donuts when we're done. Now if you have big circle dies, you could use that to die cut this by all means. And I have some of those actually that I could have used here, but I wanted to show you how you could just use anything circular at home to trace your shape and cut it by hand. It doesn't have to be perfect by all means. We're handmade, not Hallmark, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Now after I have the two large circles cut, this is the outside edge of my wreath, I need to cut out the center and I looked around until I found a little jar that would give me about an inch or a little bit less than an inch thick of a donut shape. So I'm just tracing the circle in the center. You'll notice I didn't exactly get it centered but it really doesn't matter. Now what I found is easiest to go about cutting the circle out is to cut a bunch of uh, little lines that kind of go towards the circle from the center and that makes it easier to cut out. Now if you have circle dies you could just put a circle die there and it's much quicker and easier to cut it with the circle die but I wanted to show you how you could do this if you don't have the circle dies. I ended up going back and just cutting this with my circle die just to make it faster but I wanted to demonstrate this for you. And again I'm cutting both pieces at once to save time. Let's go ahead and set those aside and create all of the flowers that we're going to put on this wreath. I find it fastest to die cut my shapes first. So I actually have two pieces of cardstock here so I can double die cut as I'm doing this. And I'm cutting some flowers and leaves and berries from a reverse confetti uh, die set. So again, I'm double cutting. So I'm cutting two pieces at once and I just did a bunch of these. Now I find it faster for me to die cut and then stamp a bunch at once. Um, and I don't perfectly stamp on it perfectly straight every time, but that doesn't bother me. If you want it to be perfect, I would try instead stamping and then die cutting because you can see through these dies. Now for the leaves, I use Lime Green and Green Hills from Hero Arts. These are two green inks that are really nice. You'll notice they stamp splotchy at first, but as they dry, they'll smooth out. And for the flowers, I'll use a similar ink, a Simon Says Stamp Coral Reef, which is like a peach color, and then the Hero Arts Yellow Butter Bar ink. Now you'll see you kind of get in a rhythm of just going through and stamping a bunch of these at once. I ended up needing quite a few flowers and leaves for the wreath that I'm creating. I went back and cut a few more. And it didn't really take all that long to make this card in the end. It took me less time than I expected it to. This is a special card for a special someone, so I did want to put a little bit of extra love into it. You could actually make this card a little bit faster by instead die cutting from colored card stocks and just skipping the stamping altogether. And that would just give you the shapes and you'd be a lot quicker. Now for the little berries, I used one of my favorite colors. It's the W plus 9 Sweet Gelato. It's like a, a reddish pink. It's just beautiful. You can see how nice that one stamps also. Finally, I stamped a little dotted image with a soft brown ink in the center of all of my flowers. This is just a light ink. I'm going to later come back and trace over this, which you'll see later on in this video. So now that we have all of our little flowers and leaves ready, it's time to do that stamped acetate window that floats in the center of our wreath. So I have one of my donut shapes here. This is going to be the one that we'll put all of our, all of our flowers in. The other one we'll save for later. And I'm cutting a piece of scrap acetate. This is just some um, clear packaging that I had on some stamps that I bought that I didn't need anymore. So I'm just cutting that up. Any kind of clear piece would work here. And I'm just cutting it to be bigger than the circle on the inside of our wreath and smaller than the circle on the outside. Now on the top of this donut piece, I'm going to cover it with adhesive and put this piece of acetate on top of it. It doesn't matter how nicely you cut that acetate because it's all going to be covered up. Now I have this great stamp set from Reverse Confetti called Lots to Say. I love this sentiment set. I can't believe I've never seen this one before. I'll be using it a lot. Now I'm going to stamp this with white stays on ink. 
Now, this is where I'm leaving a mistake in the video for you to see. I was too lazy to re-ink my white stays on ink pad. Now, the white stays on ink pad comes with the re-inker because it needs to be re-inked often. And I stamped it and I didn't completely stamp my image and it was bugging me. So I needed to start over. Now, if you stamp with stays on on acetate and you mess up, you can just clean it with a baby wipe, or I'm sorry, clean it with an alcohol swab, then a baby wipe, and then just dry it off. And it'll be clean and good to go. So alcohol swab, swab is a great way to kind of start over when you're stamping on acetate. So now I'm going back and re-inking my white stays on. It comes with a re-inker so that you can re-ink it whenever you need to. And I just love the results of this white on the acetate. It's definitely my favorite of the stays on inks. Now there is one tricky thing to stays on ink is you want to clean it off your stamps. It's not good to leave it on your stamps because it will be hard to get off later. You don't want to use stays on cleaner on your clear stamps. Instead, I use this product from Hero Arts called Ultra Clean. Um, any kind of clear stamp cleaner would probably work here. I just spray it onto my scrubber pad here and scrub it off on this side and then clean it off on the other side and then just wipe it with a baby wipe and it's clean and good to go and my stamp is nice and safe. Now it's time to start arranging our flowers. I put some adhesive on the white donut shape so that we can start putting our pieces on. Now I found these long leaf pieces a little hard to work with so I'm tearing them each in half so I have smaller pieces. And I'll tell you the hardest part of like arranging flowers into a shape is getting started. Once you get started, you'll see that you can easily tuck pieces behind others and layer pieces on top of each other to form a really nice like floral arrangement. So, but just getting started is the trickiest part, but once you get going, it's very easy. Now you may notice here that I was impatient and I did not wait for my white stays on ink to dry. And as I'm doing this, my hand is completely messing up my white stays on. But I am not willing to go back and start over. So I'm just taking an alcohol swab and wiping some of it away. And then to get into the tiny areas where the swab is too big, I'm using a little micro brush. This has a little foam tip. And I'm picking up some alcohol um, with the tip of this and rubbing it away. This is just to prevent me from having to start completely over with that centerpiece. So I just kind of fixing that and nobody will ever know. I'll tell you, I'm making mistakes left and right with this card, but that's kind of how it goes. I was in a hurry because my daughter was going to wake up soon, and I'm sure we've all been there. Okay, so let's go back to arranging these flowers. And you'll see I'm just kind of piecing them together, working from side to side, overlapping things. This adhesive is really good for arranging these pieces because you can move it and um, kind of rub the adhesive away if you get it somewhere you don't want to. You can peel pieces up to tuck things under. And then it ends up drying nice and strong. So I recommend an adhesive that allows you to re reposition things. You could always go back and squirt a strong adhesive underneath it if you feel you need to. Now I was looking at this and I almost stopped here because I thought, oh, that looks kind of cool. But I decided to go ahead and finish my vision and go and, and tape these all around this wreath shape. Now I'll tell you, I fiddled with some things like I decided I wanted some darker leaves. So I went and stamped some darker leaves and tucked those in. I spent probably about 20 minutes arranging all these flowers on here. And I spent about 10 minutes creating them. So I would say the flower part took me about a half hour, which for me isn't that long because I usually spend a lot of time on my cards. Okay, so I'm just going through and completing, putting all these pieces down. I think a big difference that I made here was popping up a few of the flowers. So what I did is removed any of the flowers that were kind of on the top layer of my arrangement. I picked them up and put a little bit of foam adhesive behind uh, some of these, just to pop some up and give it some dimension and keep it from looking too flat. I like using that big foam roll tape and tearing off or cutting off tiny little pieces. I find this much faster to work with than the tiny little square tabs with the little pieces of release paper. So I'm just doing this with some of the flowers and some of the berries and it really makes a big difference in the end. And remember those tiny little brown dots I put in the center of the flowers? You can barely see them on here, but the whole point was I just wanted to see them enough to trace over them with this gold marker. This gold marker comes in a pack with silver also, and it's a great metallic pen. And adding just this little bit of metallic shine to the center of the flowers really makes the card pop. Something easy and simple that you can do to the center of any of your flowers. Okay, so now that we've created like the front of our card, the wreath with the sentiment, we need to create the piece that allows our card to open up like a traditional card or kind of like a traditional card and also to make it stand up if you wanted to. So I'm grabbing the other donut and putting a score line about a half inch from the top edge of the circle. And I'm going to score this. 
um, with my bone folder and fold it back and forth a few times so it's got like a nice hinge there and this hinge will allow our card to open up so I'm going to lay this down flat onto my table and I'm going to put a strong adhesive above that score line this is extreme Tombow extreme adhesive it's very strong and I'm just putting it above that score line and then I'm going to put my card down uh, right on top of that so that little hinge will be at the top center of our wreath here so nobody will ever see that little hinge and look at the card opens up just nicely like a normal card but it's see-through through the center and it also still stands up so you may wonder where do you put the sentiment I'm just writing it along this curve along the bottom now this is a card I plan to send to my friend Christina Werner so I hope she's not watching this video but anyways she I think she, since she's a card maker she might get a kick out of the fact that it's just a completely different shaped card if you want this card to be a little more traditional you could have just done a large circle and kept a solid area in the center so you'd have more room to write on the inside well there you have a fun way to make a shape card that is very different than anything else sometimes it's fun to do something different all the products I used are linked below in my YouTube description and you can find much more information at jennifermcguireinc.com this card is also for a guest post at Reverse Confetti, and I encourage you to check out their blog, and I'll link to that below. Thanks so much for watching.